What you doing? Um, writing a letter to my pen pal. In you have a pen pal? Yeah. Uh, just a second. Looks like somebody barfed all over the kitchen. <laughs> Emma has been um, pen palling a friend from Hickler Hickory Hill Homestead, and it's been kind of fun to put things through the actual snail mail, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's so descriptive. Looks like we have a friend visiting us in the kitchen. Well, Miss Belle, what are you doing? Hey, Belle. She thinks she's part human. Who lives under the dishwasher? Hey, Belly Bell. Come on, baby. Mommy, nice. <laughs> this cute rabbit is so sweet. Hi, huh, Belle. <laughs> she's not sure what to think of the camera. <laughs> so Belle is one of our babies from our first litter that we had um, months ago. I don't remember even what, was it June? Maybe it was June. Anyway. I wrote um, it down on the calendar. She is a sweet girl. Sammy takes such good care of his rabbits. Huh, Bill. It is not jacket weather. No, it is coat weather. It is freezing cold out here. Whew. I don't know what the temperature is, but the temperature is cold. Cold. It's a gorgeous day. Gorgeous, gorgeous day. Um, bright skies, beautiful mountains. Just gorgeous. This almost makes me feel like I'm in a horror show. Anywhere I go, it's like, I'm followed, I'm followed. What do you think, lady? What do you think? Pretty birds. You dying? Welcome to the milking parlor. <laughs> Looks like some of our straw bales over here are kind of leaning over. Wonder if the goats are pushing them. I don't know if you can tell, but it's kind of slanted up. So we'll have to check on that for sure. Miss um, Pumpkin thinks I've got a treat for her. Oh, they love their apple treats. We got some horse treats for them. See, she's waiting for me to hand it to her. I'm sorry. So we give them treats after we milk. But oh, they love their treats. Here's our apple blossom. She is our cow. <laughs> she gives us about a quart and a half every milking, and that's twice a day. And our pumpkin over here that Emma's tackling. <laughs> she gives us about a half a quart a day. So, um, but that will go up when we rebreed, which is going to be next month, I believe. That'll give us some April babies. What do you think of the straw M's? Is it is it good enough? Yeah, it's pretty thick and it's not. Is it wet, wet though? Put your hand down there and see. No. But go underneath. Would you sleep in it? It's really fine. Great. We really love it in here. We're really glad that we have it. Um, Jonah put me up a hook here oh, yeah. that I can hang a lantern or something by, which you saw in yesterday's video. Um, I am looking into a solar lantern that I can use out here. Um, a little bit safer than fire and um, more easily accessible. So we are excited about that. I can also hang my milk bucket from there if needed. So all in all, we're happy with this shack. We've got the uh, straw up around the sides that really helped keep a lot of the winter weather out that we have been experiencing the last couple of days. 
So, if you've been tuning in to our channel, you'll know that a few weeks ago we had a series of strange events. I think that is what the video is actually called. Series of strange events. Another one has hit. Thankfully, we haven't lost any new animals, um, but we have a case of some missing water. That's right, water. We have a 45 gallon water barrel right here. The kids had left the water running on accident and it was overflowing when I came out to do chores um, late at night. And so I turned off the water and it was a very, very rainy, stormy night. Turned off the water. Um, the next morning I came out, there was maybe an inch in the bottom, an inch. This is way too heavy for the goats to have tipped over. Where did it go? Where did 45 gallons of water go in the middle of a rainstormy night? Who knows? And so the first thought would be, okay, there's a hole maybe in the bucket. So I refilled it. No, it's been this full for two days now. Two days! I'm thinking there's a herd of antelope that has uh, sauntered through and came in and, and drank 45 gallons of water in the middle of the night. I am perplexed. <laughs> no idea where it went. But uh, as we're out here in the goat corral, um, I'll just kind of update that um, we are really, really loving these fence posts. They are natural insulators. And we have a video on that that I'll link in the end screen. But um, the goats are doing really well acclimating to the um, electric fencing. Um, so we're thinking next spring we'll be able to open up more of the pasture for them to be able to utilize and enjoy. One thing I really love about Pumpkin Spice here is that when we first got her, she was not a loving goat. She was very shy, very timid, um, did not want much to do with us. Apple Blossom here is a turd, <laughs> but we just love her. She's a very strong personality and she's easy to give her love. Um, apple blo um, Pumpkin Spice, not so much. We've had to earn her affection and it almost makes it more sweet. We really have fallen very hard and very fast in love with these beautiful goats. We need to get them some beard balm. Homesteading with the cases, um, they, they work with the beard commander and uh, we need to get them some beard balm. Cases, you know you want to donate some beard balm to my goats. <laughs> you special girls. One thing we are going to be doing is I got a dish to um, screw into the wall in the shack. Um, for some loose minerals. We do have a mineral block that contains selenium, but in talking to a couple other goat farms around the area here and with my friend over at Wholesome Roots Rose, um, minerals, loose minerals are a good addition to their diet. So we are going to leave that free choice for them inside the shack so it stays out of the weather. One thing you should not do ugh, is touch metal and not realize where your legs are untouched the electric fence. My whole body is buzzing and Emma's laughing her head off at me. That hurt. <laughs> it's on, it works. <laughs> Ouch. Soon we're really hoping to get the chickens under control. I'm hoping to get the chickshaw set up um, and get both the flocks put together so we can, um, one, contain where the eggs might be being laid <laughs> and uh, I think it'll just I don't know we'd like to keep them on the garden so they can fertilize and um, spread any uh, mulch and stuff on there that we add to the garden so using chickens for our advantage some one reason why we like having chickens among many other reasons 
Thank you for coming along today with us on this crazy adventure that we like to call homesteading. You guys are awesome for the support, for watching, for liking and subscribing. And uh, hopefully we'll see you tomorrow.